let me give you another application of utility theory. Let's say that we have a little young fella in the classroom who is misbehaving. Oh, it's first grade, second grade, he's, he's little Johnny or whatever. And he's constantly interrupting the teacher, throwing paper around, making jokes with his friends. Loves to be the focus of attention. Maybe he's funny, but maybe he's irritating as the devil. If you were the teacher, how would you try to change his behavior? And utility theory has, a, I think, a, a way of looking at that that's helpful. Here's the way we'd look at it. Johnny's marginal utility for every extra minute he's behaving this way, is kind of the, the class clown that cut up the problem, his marginal utility for that behavior, we'll call A, compared to the price or cost to him of that behavior. What is the cost to him of misbehaving? Well, if the teacher doesn't discipline him, it's very, very low. And very, very high utility because he's the center of attention. People think he's really cool and funny. Okay? We compare that to his marginal utility of an alternative behavior, becoming a good, conscientious, disciplined student, compared to the price to him of that change in behavior of having to sit still, pay attention, work hard on his, on his assignments. What do we know is happening right off the bat? We know right off the bat, this is true. He's getting a whole lot more enjoyment for the cost out of being the class clown than he is or would be out of being a, a regular organized discipline student. So how do we change his behavior? Now, I've got a little military background, including growing up with a career military father. And my first instinct on how to change that behavior is very straightforward. You grab him by the stack and swivel and you stand him in attention and you straighten him out. You discipline him. Back in the old days, you took the paddle out and you gave him a paddle up in front of the class. Or maybe if they were really young, you stood him back in the corner. Or these days you put him in time out. But in some way you discipline him. And that's our first instinct frequently is, I'm going to stop that behavior and the first thing we try to do, we try to raise the cost. You want to behave that way? This is what it's going to cost you, son. That's option one. That's an option. But there are three other options, three other ways of viewing this we get from utility theory. For example, is there any way to diminish his pleasure or enjoyment or benefit of acting, up, acting like a clown? We've seen it happen in, in experiments in, in elementary schools. When you can coach the rest of the class to ignore him, the benefit of that behavior disappears for most of them very quickly. And that can change behavior rather painlessly. So that's a consideration. How can we distract attention away from Johnny? How can we keep people from paying attention to him? A couple of other options, though. Can we raise his enjoyment or benefit of being a good, disciplined student. What can we do for Johnny that would reward him for the kind of behavior we want? Whether it's putting gold stars on his papers, or his name on a reading list and how many books he's read, or sending him home with a nice note to his mom, or giving him a piece of candy, or 20 or 30 pieces of candy and wire him up on sugar. No, we don't want to do that. But can we in some way reward and encourage him for the alternative behavior we want to see? And then finally, and the one most overlooked, if we know how we want Johnny to behave, it's going to, it's going to cost him something. There's going to be some price to that. And we ask, is there some way to diminish that? As a quick example, if we say, Johnny, I want you to change your behavior. I want you to be good all day today. You know, I, you're wasting your time. He's not thinking all day today. The best he's doing is thinking the next 10 or 15 minutes, right? So if you can take this in smaller bites and make it easier, Johnny, Clean your act up for 10 minutes, and we'll all go to recess. Can you do that? Well, 10 minutes is within his focus, okay, within his self-discipline. So we have reduced the price of that good behavior, and maybe taking it in smaller increments is a better idea. Pick any behavior you like. Pick one in your own, own life. Some behavior you wish you could change. 
and look at what the behavior is, what it, you would like to change it to, and develop four different approaches, four different strategies, not to be used separately, you use them all at the same time, to help you make those changes in your life or in that other person's life. Remember the one when I asked you about relationships and you rolled your eyes? Can you change that relationship? Okay. If you've got kids, think about this. Right? This is not just about you and me. This is about society as a whole. If there are changes in society we need to make, for example, trying to reduce drug usage, does this give us some ideas on building different policies, different pursuits of how to reduce drug usage? All right. I hope that's useful.